forward this email to 10 people or the girl from the ring will come to haunt you. Psh, what is this, 2002? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we spill the tea, dish the goss, and give hard-hitting facts on the latest tech trends. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the top 5 email providers available today. But first... <laughs> Please like and subscribe to make all of this worth it. Please. Let's have a look at the best email providers. We've got Proton Mail, Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, and iCloud Mail. You know, the usual suspects. I should start by explaining a little bit about how I'm going to be rating these. There are three key features that I look for in an email provider. Number one, above all else, is security. I'm a guy who likes his privacy. I don't need some service provider going through my mail. I'd also love it if I could keep a certain ghost from tracking, well, water all over my studio. Number two is cost. Specifically, I like to know exactly what I'm paying for. Following that, I also want to be assured that the free version of any email provider is up to par. Finally, number three is the ease of use. This may not be a big deal for some people, but as of today, I'd like to be able to just create an account and start forwarding spam emails to people that I know right away. All right, first up, we've got Proton Mail. So how does Proton Mail hold up to this super strict criteria with all that in mind? Honestly, Pretty well. It's kind of our top pick. So let's start with privacy. Proton Mail is like a thick steel vault when it comes to your emails. For starters, it's based in Switzerland, where privacy policies are much stricter than other countries, like, say, the US. Beyond that, however, Proton Mail goes a step further by using public key cryptography to encrypt your messages. This means that nobody, and I mean nobody, can view your private messages. This is due to the zero access encryption of public key cryptography. Also, all your communications between you and other ProtonMail users are encrypted from end to end. Which means no long-haired ghosts can escape my TV screen. So, in terms of privacy and security, I will give ProtonMail 5 FBI manhunts out of 5. Now, let's take a look at the cost. ProtonMail offers you a free version, more on that soon, and a premium version at $5 per month, or $48 per year. Now, these prices are fairly moderate. I wouldn't go so far as to say they are a bargain, but they are more reasonable than some other premium email providers. The paid version offers you more storage space, more messages per day, and a handful of other useful features to personalize the experience. On the other hand, the free version is, well, let's just call it underwhelming. For starters, you only get 500 megabytes worth of space and can only send 500 messages per day. That may be enough for some, but it's a problem for people like me who tends to let their unread messages pile up to obscene heights. Also, the free version only lets you add three tags to your emails, so you can only sort them into three broad categories. The paid version lifts this restriction, of course, but why do I have to pay to tag my emails? So when it comes to cost, ProtonMail kind of drops the ball. I'm gonna give it two terabytes out of five. Finally, let's look at how this baby handles. Setting up a ProtonMail account is pretty easy. Just pick a username like, then come up with a strong password like, and you're pretty much good to go. You have to pass the capture as well. The interface looks pretty attractive, but it can seem cluttered at times. Before doing anything else, we recommend going to your settings and enabling two-factor authentication to get OTPs whenever you want to access your account or private messages. Other than some clutter on the homepage, ProtonMail is still nice to look at and pretty easy to use. I could start forwarding my spam mail to my friends and family members straight away with no hassle. So I'm giving it four chain emails out of five. Before we move on, we've got a few links in the description, so you knock a few bucks off that already affordable subscription plan. Up next, Gmail. Gmail needs no introduction. Pretty much everyone has at least three or four inactive Gmail accounts in addition to their primary account. But exactly how good is Gmail? Security and privacy are up first, and honestly, they're both alright. Like ProtonMail, Gmail offers end-to-end -end encryption when communicating with other Gmail users. You can also enable two-factor authentication, adding a security layer to your messages. Beyond that, Gmail is good at catching spam messages and filtering them accordingly. Of course, it isn't perfect, and it doesn't always get it right, but it learns from its mistakes. 
You can even add additional spam filters for maximum effect. Now I wish I got the memo earlier, because now I've got to look for a ghost exterminator. If only there was a special word for that kind of thing. Of course, Gmail is based in the US, whose privacy policies are... eh. The company can't make you show them your messages, but a lawyer with a subpoena can. Gmail also mines your messages for data to recommend ads, which is just bleh, bleh, gross. All of it's legal and technically above board, so what are you gonna do about it? I'd give Gmail security features a middling three FBI manhunts out of five. Now let's look at the cost, and this is where Gmail really shines. Gmail's free tier offers you 15 gigabytes of storage, shared across all of your Google apps, like Google Drive, and doesn't limit how many messages you can send. Beyond that, Gmail has four different pricing plans, ranging from $6 per month to $18 and beyond. These plans have their own set of features and restrictions, but the business plan in particular is pretty cool because it allows you to customize your domain name to suit your business. You could have an email address like save me at imhaunted.com, for example. Overall, I'm giving Gmail's pricing option a solid four terabytes out of five. Finally, let's take a look at Gmail's ease of use. What is there to say? It's Gmail. You create an account in three steps. Open up your Gmail app and immediately get bombarded by spam. Gmail has that Google aesthetic, which is, uh, eh. Honestly, I've just gotten a bit sick of Google's whole look. Honestly though, the worst part about using Gmail is that there is no desktop app. You have to open it up in your browser, which is also gross. Overall, I'm giving Gmail's ease of use three respectable chain emails out of five. Now, if you're a Google Workspace user, you can find a link in the description that will get you a subscription at a pretty neat discount. Okay, next, we'll be looking at Outlook. So Outlook exists in the Microsoft Cinematic Universe as its email provider. A lot of Outlook's essential security features are locked behind a paywall. This includes email encryption, which is a huge knock to the service. Outlook also doesn't check your emails for potential threats unless you pay for a subscription. Damn it, Outlook! In terms of security and privacy, I'm giving Outlook zero FBI manhunts out of five. Ouch. When it comes to pricing, Outlook offers three plans, including the free version, which gives you 15 gigabytes worth of storage space, the calendar feature, and access to the Android and iOS apps. The tier up from that goes for $69.99 a year, which is a huge hike in price and doesn't offer much other than 50 gigabytes worth of storage. Apart from that is the family plan, which also gives you 50 gigabytes worth of storage, but allows up to six people to use it. This goes for $99.99 per year. Yeah, price-wise, Outlook isn't looking too great either, but at least it offers you 15 gigabytes worth of storage in the free plan. I'm thinking two terabytes out of five for this one. Finally, let's look at the interface and how easy it is to use. Outlook is pretty consistent with other Office apps. That means that anyone who's ever used Word before will feel right at home. It's sleek and attractive. Setting up your account is also pretty easy if you already have a Microsoft account. Overall, it's a solid four chain emails out of five. Okay, now let's look at Yahoo. The only people who use Yahoo nowadays are edgelords who aren't like other boys or girls. Let's see if the service is any good at what it does. Where do you think my first email account was a Yahoo one? When I was like eight years old? Do they still have the avatar thing? When it comes to security, Yahoo drops the ball. It offers its version of two-factor authentication in the form of a Yahoo account key. Not bad, but where Yahoo slips up is not sending you an email whenever your account is accessed from a new IP address or device, or, you know, a creepy 10-year-old girl. Seriously, that's one of the most basic features that any email provider offers, but not Yahoo. Uh-huh, Yahoo's too good for that. Beyond that, Yahoo is pretty good at handling spam and keeping your inbox clear of clutter. But really, it's clear that security isn't their primary focus, so we're giving it one FBI manhunt out of five. Now, let's look at how much Yahoo thinks it is worth. Yahoo's free version offers you a whopping one terabyte of storage, which is... Yeah, okay, that's actually pretty good. The web client also has many features baked into it, which are all freely accessible. If you want to step your account up and earn that good Reddit gold, you can opt for a business account at $1.19 per month. In terms of pricing, we've got to hand it to Yahoo. It's a whole five terabytes out of five. 
Okay, now let's see how easy it is to use. Make an account is as easy as you'd expect, so no worries. Beyond that, Yahoo offers you a handy filing tool that seems only half implemented because you can't create any subfolders. This can lead to a lot of clutter, which will be pretty frustrating for people who like their emails to be clean. Unfortunately, even though Yahoo email launched back in 2000 BC, it is plagued by bugs and errors, which drags the whole experience down. We're giving it two chain emails out of five. God, here we go again. Finally, let's take a quick look at iCloud Mail. This one is for all you scummy iOS users out there. You know who you are. Honestly, iCloud Mail is pretty good all around. In terms of security, it offers you all of the basics. Two-factor authentication and encryption between iCloud users. It also features those neat little security tokens, which act as an account key. These security tokens are linked to your account, so your device doesn't need to store your passwords. Pretty handy in case someone gets a hold of one of your devices. Overall, they don't go out of their way to ensure that your messages are protected, not any more than other email providers. So as such, three FBI manhunts out of five. Pricing wise, I think iCloud may take the cake here. Anyone with an Apple device automatically gets access to an iCloud account with five gigabytes of storage. Now, this might not seem like a lot, but keep in mind that you don't even need to have an Apple device to reap the benefits. Once you've got your account, you can use it on any device that you please. Above that, there are three pricing plans, which are, oh boy, they're good. For just 99 cents per month, you get access to 50 gigabytes worth of storage. $2.99 a month, you get 200 gigabytes. And for $9.99, you get an insane two terabytes worth of storage space. Think of all the family-friendly Christian documents you could store. For pricing and cost, we're giving this a whopping five terabytes out of five. Now let's look at how easy iCloud is to use and get used to. Once you've registered an Apple device, you need to go into your settings and then select iCloud, then mail, and you'll be prompted to come up with your email address. Pretty neat. Beyond that, iCloud Mail doesn't offer you much flexibility. Sure, your account can be accessed from any device, but I found the filing system to be, um, eh. What can I say? I like it when an email service lets me customize my folders. For ease of use, iCloud Mail gets a solid three chain emails out of five. Okay, so there you have it. That's the list. I'm leaning towards Proton Mail because it offers a better package overall. Plus, you know me, that security is a big deal. Tamara, if you're gonna stay here, you'll need to start paying some bloody rent.